been a while since I've been here, but I'm at Hammer's Casino for a tournament today. It's the California State Poker Championship. There's a game today, it's a $240 buy-in for 20,000 chips with 30 minute levels. It's a 250K guarantee. So this is uh, day one. I haven't played a tournament here in a little while and the last time I did didn't go so well. But I played a lot last night, had a really late night, got some good hands and I'm really excited to play my game and make it to day two. So, wish me luck. It. I just realized that I forgot my glasses at home. So, uh, yeah, hopefully I get seat four through six. This says seat one, but you know, sometimes you go to the floor man and they'll sit you at a different table, a different seat. So please pray for me. What's up y'all? Okay, so it's the first break and I gotta tell you about this very first hand. So I do end up sitting in seat one. We're playing nine-handed. And when I sit down, there's only um, three of us sitting there. Um, so the dealer's trying to get started and ends up putting out two dead stacks. Um, and I end up in the small blind for 100, just 100, 100. So we got 100 dead money in there. I wake up with nine deuce off. Middle position player raises to 300, and I'm really thinking that there's dead money in there, and he's just trying to get me off of it so he can just win this 200 real fast and move along to the next hand. But I defend, and we go to the flop, which is 8, 9, 10 with two spades. I checked dark beforehand, so when it gets to him, he makes it 600. And then he's like staring me down. And so I stare back and then I smile <laughs> like a crazy person. And then I call. And the turn is a seven of diamonds. And I, I check dark again. So I'd already checked dark. He checks. And the river is off suit queen of some sort. And I lead out for 1500. And he tanks for a minute. Not really that long and slowly folds. But I'm taking notes on this guy, right? Cause I'm like, that stare down was very, very, very intense. But one thing I learned from Daniel Negrano's masterclass is that a lot of times when people seem strong, they're actually weak. Or when they seem weak, they can be strong. In this case, I still don't know, right? He mucked his hand, but he did say at the end, I flopped a set of nines. And I was like, oh, well. That was a terrible flop for you. Good fold. <laughs> so here's another hand. We're still in the first round of play. So the blinds are 100, 100, and I'm in the cutoff with sixes. And there are two limpers before it gets to me, and I pop it up to 400, and those two limpers call. So we go three ways to the flop, uh, which is four, five, 10, rainbow. And it checks to me, and I make it 600. The early position player calls, the other player folds, and now we're heads up to the turn. And this is me and the same guy from the very first hand, right? Keep that in mind. So the turn is a king of clubs. And he checks to me, I bet 1100. And he pretty quickly calls. The river is the king of diamonds. He checks to me again, and I make it 2,200. And pretty quickly, he raises to 4,200. Now, a couple things to note here. This is the same guy from the first hand. And remember the stare down? No stare down. This time, he's looking down to the left, and he's got this weird little shake going on. And I'm like, hmm, 
when he flopped a set of nines, he wanted to like look down my throat and now he doesn't even want to look at me. So I sense some weakness there. But I think for a minute and I'm like, he doesn't have a king. I just, that doesn't play like he has a king. And that raise is so weak, I can't help but call. I have to call this raise, so I do. And he instantly mucks and says, you know, good call. And I show my sixes and everybody's like, whoa, good call. In hindsight, I'm really thinking, actually he owes me 200. And now that I'm like playing it back in my mind, he only raised it to 4,200. So the dealer messed up and I messed up because I should have caught that. So he owes me 200, so we gonna get that. I didn't really document this last hand, so I don't remember all the details, but I did just lose a big pot to his ass. Apparently, him and I are just going toe to toe. I'm up to about 30K right now, so headed back in for the next several hours. Yes. One of the things that I do like about the commerce tournaments is they give you these food vouchers. So I get seven, I get free, what do I get? <laughs> I get free food at this place over there or it might just be $7 off. But sometimes they have food over here on the side so let's go see what they have. It's almost four o'clock and I ate a mango today. Yeah, I know. What's your favorite? The burrito. That does sound good. You don't think it's gonna make me sleepy? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just have the Caesar salad. Caesar? That way I can stay awake. Uh, room temperature water, please. Swoop. Thank you. Thanks a bunch. Have a good day. You too. Thanks. All right, it is the last break, which is the second break. I wanna give a shout out to Poker Bruh on my YouTube who advised that getting to the tournament early could give you the opportunity to pick up all those chips from those people that are playing hands that they probably shouldn't and chasing draws that they really shouldn't. And so I did show up on time today and started at 4 p.m. with everyone. I started with 20,000 chips. I was up to about 65,000 and the very last hand I just, uh, lost about a third of my stack. So I'm at about 40,000 right now, but if I had to come later, uh, I would have missed some of those opportunities. So thanks, Poker Bra. I do have video from that last hand. I, I had pocket eights against pocket aces against six, seven of spades. Nice open. Aces, oh fuck. Nice hand. Seven. Fuck. Nice hand. Six seven ends up hitting the flush. Pocket aces uh, side pot with me and yeah, but uh, yeah. Anyways, here's a hand that I had. I I got nine six of spades on the button. And right now the big blind's 500, so the middle position player raises to 1,000. I call 1,000 and the small blind calls and we go three ways to the flop, which is seven, eight, nine, rainbow. Um, the small blind checks, middle position player ends up going all in for 5,700. And I'm tanking and trying to figure out what I wanna do. So I'm open-ended and I got top pair. So my open-ended, I can hit a five or a 10, right? So I got eight outs, 31%. I could also hit a nine and probably be ahead. Um, there is the small blind pair behind me. Now he could have jack 10 and flop the nuts, but I'm not putting him on jack 10. I know this player is not really in his range um, to call a raise um, in early position like that, but it is a concern. So I flat the 5,700 and the small blind tanks for a minute and then goes all in for 16,800. So an additional 11,000 or so to me. I think at, at that time I had about 20, 28,000 or so in my stack. And I think for a minute, 
thinking about everything that I just said, I go ahead and make that call. And small blind player has king 10 off, so he's on an open ender as well. So if he hits that, um, that would beat me. Um, and then the middle position player has aces. And the turn is a nine, and the river is like a four, or something like that. So I scoop up that nice, big, juicy, delicious pot. Mm. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. I just busted. Why am I smiling? I, I don't know. I, I'm smiling because what is I going to do? I had ace 10 in the cutoff. Blinds are 4,800. I made it 2,500. Get two callers. The flop is ace four king um, with two spades. And uh, early position player checks. I make it 5,000. He raises to 10,000. So I'm like, okay. He's, he's the same guy who won that hand with aces before. And from what I hear, he's pretty wily. Plays a lot of hands. Um, so I'm like, okay, I gotta call this. The turn is the queen of spades. And I do have the ace of spades. So he leads out for 10,000. I have about 20,000 and I just ship it. Thinking I got a spade draw. So I got nine outs there. I could hit a jack. If the board pairs like a king or queen, if he doesn't have ace king, then I could be ahead. So I had plenty of outs and um, he turns over ace four. And the river is like a five, a red five or something. So what are you gonna do? There is a satellite right now going on for the main event. It's $175 to enter for a seat into the main event. Um, and I'm here, I'm feeling lively. I, I normally wouldn't jump into another tournament for fatigue reasons and all that kind of stuff, but it's still early. My mind is sharp, I'm feeling good. I don't feel fatigued, I don't feel tilted at all. So what y'all think? You think I should jump in? For those of you who said yes, 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 I'm in the 175 satellite for an $1,100 seat to the main event, which is next week. And um, there are currently six players left, so we're on the bubble. Four players get a seat, and the fifth place player gets $400 of tournament chips to enter into another tournament. I am right now one of the shorter stacks there's like three monsters and then three of us minis and we're all about the same so i'm kind of doing this waiting game picking spots i, I the blinds are about to be they were just fucking 1500 3000 so i know they're gonna be what two four and i only have like 12,000. so like i don't have a lot of wiggle room um but the guy to my left probably has five big blinds so I could wait his ass out. He was just all in um, right before the break and freaking held up. And usually I say, good luck all in, but I didn't mean it, so I didn't say it. But he did it anyway. So, let's burst through this bubble. I can do that. You guys, I'm like beyond excited and beyond proud of myself. Got my seat to the main event. Made it. Got my seat to the $1,100 main event for my $175 buy-in. It's going to fuck down. Mm. I just um, picked the last day. That's the strategy I learned. Pick the last day, which is um, Saturday. And if I decide I want to come Friday, Thursday, or Wednesday, I can come and do it early. But if I pick Wednesday and I don't make it, my chips are on the table, they're just gonna, they're just gonna go. So I'm so happy. I'm proud of myself. I made a, a, a big mistake at the end right there. I ended up holding up, but we had passed the bubble by then and there's five players. So four players get a seat, right? And the fifth player, um, gets 400 in tournament chips and I had just doubled up so I, I was sitting pretty good like 30,000 chips and the blinds were 2,000, 4,000 and there was a guy over there kind of like hard for me to see 
and he only had 6,000. And I get queen, king off suit and go all in like an idiot. I hold up, I double up actually. But even after I finish, he's like, you aren't supposed to do that. What are you doing? And I only have 6,000. Like you're supposed to wait until I bust. Like you just did something really dumb. And I'm like, thanks guy. He's right. And I said, you're exactly right. You're exactly correct. I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention. I had gotten so excited that this is the best hand I'd seen in so long. I got so excited that I wasn't paying attention. I lost my focus. And that could have been bad. I could have been fifth place with $400 in tournament chips, which is great, but it's not a seat to the main event, which is the $1,100 buy-in, which is what I entered that tournament to do. So I just learned a valuable lesson. Thank God I didn't have to learn it the hard way, but you live and you learn. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram at P's and Q's Poker. I'd love to hear your thoughts. See you next time.